Welcome to The Life, an E! News media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. In this, the school's 150th year, our new name pays homage to the illustrious past of Brooklyn Friends and The Life, the student-run newspaper that had a 60-year run. In Tina Piccolo's sixth grade studio art class, students learned how to create a painting from observation by rendering a section of a stage set. Their painted compositions of subjects and objects representing the diversity that makes America great were painted from realistic mannequins with different features, skin colors, and identifying clothes. The set included American and rainbow flags, Statue of Liberty, and other symbolic props related to the ideals of freedom and liberty. The students researched artists that have countered negative ideas in the past with positive symbols and visual narratives. Our artists learn how to organize a composition, render from observation, and develop a conscious understanding of how juxtaposition of subject and object inform meaning. The paintings are currently on display in the hallways of Brooklyn Friends School. On today's show, we will hear an alumni reflection from Courtney Clark of the class of 2006. And this week's big story is about the fourth annual BFS Community Issues Conference. But first, these announcements from 7A. Winter Best Info Fair, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. College Night for Family Juniors takes place Monday, December 4th, 6.30 p.m. at Lawrence Street. Fourth grade parents have a tour of the middle school on Tuesday, December 5th, starting at 8.30 a.m. Winter music concerts are coming. Wednesday the 13th chorus, Thursday the 14th orchestra, Friday the 15th jazz. All concerts begin at 6 p.m. Hey guys, it's your boy. And on Wednesday, December 6th, there's a coffee hour on math for kindergarten parents. Jonathan Edmonds, math specialist, and Amanda Welch, kindergarten teacher, will present the engaging and informative workshop on what we teach and how we teach math. On Thursday and Friday, December, December 7th and 8th, there will be middle school and upper school parent conferences. Uh, middle, school students, middle school students will have no classes. Yeah! Yeah! Upper school students will have a half day of classes on Thursday and no classes Friday. Yeah! I would have to say my favorite thing about Brooklyn Friends was the atmosphere here. I don't think that I've ever come to a school that I felt so welcome. You had your group of friends, but everyone was open to talking to everyone. Just a welcoming atmosphere. The teachers were amazing, so helpful. I started math struggling and I had excelled in the past. And then I kind of, you know, I moved into 10th grade and Sergey was there and he had me help me believe in myself. I kind of set a goal that I was going to do really well and get straight A's. And he counseled me from beginning to end. And not only did he counsel me, like I excelled. And his classes were my favorite. He's just really organized. He had a teaching style that I really enjoyed. The support that I was that I had here was great. And I think it's an experience that I'll never forget. And I hope that one day when I have children, they can have the experience that I had at Brooklyn Friends. And what I'm experiencing in activism in this moment, in this country and in other countries um, that, that I'm sort of, uh, my work touches, is that there's a separatism creeping in. That there's a sense that we should do our work in our own separate groups. And every bone in my body reacts against that. And it's just me. You might disagree, many do. I was raised Hindu, and the teachings that I was raised with are yet another fuel for the work that I do. 
And this being a Quaker school, I was very um, moved that you start started with a moment of silence. And I understand um, how closely the faith um, behind the founding of the school, the philosophy, and the call to social justice, how close they are. That very nexus of faith and social justice is, uh, is where I do my work. That was part of the keynote presentation of the fourth annual Community Issues Conference. The BFS Class of 2020 led the conference for the upper school with the support of Associate Director of Service Learning and Civic Engagement, Noel Quinones. Students and faculty from Avenues, Buckley, Fieldston, Heschel, Nightingale Bamford, and Trevor Day School also attended. The goal of this student-led conference was to learn about significant local community issues, to connect with representatives from local partner organizations, and to identify ways that young people can support a constructive change in their community. There were 35 speakers representing 30 organizations. I spoke with Noel and four of our 10th grade student activists. Take a listen. Hi, Noel. You have the Community Issues Conference coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, the Community Issues Conference comes out of uh, the class that I teach, uh, myself and Natania Kramer, uh, called uh, Service and Justice, uh, Raising Awareness and Inspiring Action. Uh, it's a class for all 10th graders, where in that class we do work around uh, privilege, power, identity, and then we transition to having them organize uh, the Community Issues Conference. So it's a half-day conference uh, from 8 to 12.30, where we have a uh, keynote speaker kind of introduce uh, the day, and then we have our students who choose um, community issues that they're passionate about. This year we have 18 issues, uh, and once students choose those, they actually do all the outreach. So they invite multiple speakers to the school from local organizations throughout New York City to come and speak on those issues, uh, basically giving a background on the issue, uh, but really allowing our students to take uh, to learn tangible steps that they can take action uh, around these issues. So we really want high schoolers to understand that they uh, don't have to be on the sidelines, but they can actually be a part of social change. Hi, Anika and Kennedy. Can I ask you a few questions about the Community Issues Conference? Yes. What cause did you highlight? Colorism. Colorism. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to take place tomorrow? Well, we're talking about colorism specific, specifically in the black community. We have a guest coming. Her name is Eva Turner. And she's going to be um, talking about like where it stemmed from, what it is, and ways to heal it, and the way that it affects specifically the black community. Um, there's going to be a lot of workshops in our group. We have worksheets. We're going to have really thoughtful discussion, and we're hoping to prompt a dialogue that can maybe change the way that people view colorism and maybe colorism in the black community, colorism in the BFS community, colorism in just um, every aspect that we can touch. Hi, Mohammed. Tomorrow is the Community Issues Conference. Can you tell me what your cause is? Well, my cause was police brutality. Why did you choose police brutality? Me being a black male in New York City at this time, I feel that police brutality is a very prominent issue and it's, it affects me more than some other people. So I just hope to see more people being aware of certain problems that they might not be aware of because everybody has a different set of privileges and disadvantages and some people more than others. So everybody can find out what uh, things that can be Hurting other people. I chose to highlight religious influence over secular policy. There's a separation between church and state, like how religious views and belief influence um, politics and decisions such as things related to social change, especially um, abortion. Religion has heavily influenced that as a, as a block to it. Genetics and other scientific research and how religion is used as a way to influence those decisions and bringing to light these occurrences and how we can stop them and actually make sure that government and decisions on social policy and scientific development are not influenced by religious beliefs. Islamophobia. Why did you choose Islamophobia? Um, because I like personally relate to it. Like my family especially like relate to it on like a daily basis so I wanted to like learn more about the issue and the topic I guess so I did research me and my friend because like we're also talking about like Arab immigrants like within like Islamophobia and how like 
being Arab doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be Muslim, and being Muslim doesn't always be, mean being Arab, I guess. Emphasizing that idea so people like understand it more. It, when you're not educated, then you don't really know like the full story, I guess. And you like coming out and saying that oh, Muslims are all terrorists or whatever. Like you, pro most likely you probably haven't read the Quran and the the religion Islam, like the word itself means peace. So. Maybe if you are educated enough to maybe educate yourself on that topic. <laughs> Thank you. If your passion says you need to do work on anything in the world, I, I put to you, yes, you should follow that passion, you should follow your heart, but figure out the right way to do it. Wow, Paul, that seemed like a really fantastic conference. What did you get out of it? I was inspired by our students taking real action around important issues in their community. Essentially, letting, letting their, their lives, lives speak. speak.